Yesterday was World Water Day, and while we've made some progress over the last 10, 20 years, we still have a long way to go. 650 million people globally, no access to safe drinking water. So it's an issue that we need to keep advocating for. We need to keep raising awareness for to ensure clean water for all. Hello and welcome to this very special episode. Earlier this year, I was so thrilled to announce that Ndini had been selected by Face Africa as the official media partner for their 10th Wash Gala, which was held in New York. Now, if you don't know who Face Africa is, I highly encourage you to check them out. It's an organization that was started in 2008 by the incredible Saran Kaba Jones. Saran and her family were forced to flee their home country of Liberia in the early 80s due to the civil war that devastated the country. In 2008, she went back to Liberia for the first time, and Saran was inspired to start Fund a Child's Education, which we now know as Face Africa. Over the years, as the organization grew, Saran realized that while education was a huge priority, what was even more urgent was the need for children and their communities to have access to clean water. And so 10 years ago, the first fundraising gala was held to raise money for water, sanitation, and hygiene programs, which is why it's called the Wash Gala. This year's gala was a milestone gala, this being its 10th year. It was an absolutely phenomenal evening that raised a significant amount of money for WASH programs across Africa. It was also an opportunity to recognize just some of the people who are doing their part to help raise the quality and standard of life across Africa. Great. Yes, you yeah. look stunning. Oh, thank you. you always do. <laughs> who are you wearing? I feel like at the Oscars. Who are you wearing? I'm wearing a Nigerian designer, and I'm going to butcher the name, but it's uh, Odio. It's yes, beautiful. Yes, thank you. You look stunning. I feel like I'm um, floating on clouds and water, and that's the look I was going for. So. Which is, and you achieved it. Yes. Absolutely. So thank let's you. talk about water. Yes. This year's theme, the sound of water. Yes. Why, why is it called the sound of water? You know, it's about using our voices, mm -hmm. um, sound, voices, amplifying what we're doing, getting the message across that this issue of clean water is still very much a problem. We've made some significant progress over the last decade or two. Um, we've cut the amount of people that have no access to safe drinking water in almost half. It went from almost a billion to now 650 million people. Um, and a majority of them are in Sub-Saharan Africa. So it's an issue that affects our continent. We've been working at it for 10 years, um, but it's just a drop in the, the, the ocean, no pun intended. Um, but I think what's, what's important is to know that in our lifetime, we can solve this water crisis, right? It's something that's achievable, it's doable, um, and that's why it's important to invest in organizations like Face Africa, organizations that are African-led, diaspora-led, who are close to the issues and can really come up with solutions that address this problem. So the sound of water is all about getting people in this room to use their voices, to use their platforms, to, to bring attention to this critical issue. You said 10 years. This mm -hmm. is a big year. 10 years It's a milestone year for what us. What was your vision 10 years ago? Where did you think this would go? I had no vision. Um, I didn't set out to start a nonprofit focused on water. I went back to Liberia after almost 20 years when the Civil War forced my family and, and, and myself to, to leave. And when I went home, I saw that there was a need. There were gaps everywhere. Um, the country's infrastructure had been completely destroyed due to the Civil War. And so myself and other young Liberians knew that we needed to step in and do something. We knew that it was up to us to work with the governments, to work with other stakeholders, to try and rebuild our country literally from the ground up. 
Um, and that's how I got involved. Initially, I wanted to focus on education. And then I realized that water was, a, access to water was a barrier to education. And so, you know, it's a basic necessity that everyone needs. And if you, when you see people in communities suffering or women and girls walking long distances, hours sometimes, just to get access to water that may be contaminated, I mean, you have no choice, you have no option but to say, okay, what can I do? And that's the question I ask myself, what can I do in my own small way? And you realize that once you start doing something that's authentic, once you start doing something that people believe in and they see the impact, then they rally around you. And that's why we're here 10 years today. Today, it's been just an incredible um, period of growth of challenges, but also incredible support. I have an amazing team of people that worked with me to organize this event, but to also keep pushing the cause forward. What's been the biggest challenge for you with Face Africa in the 10 years that you've been doing this? I mean, I, it's always with any nonprofit, it's always fundraising and funding and just um, having the resources that you need to tackle an issue or to tackle a major challenge like this. So how do we find, how do we mobilize the resources, the support, not just in terms of financial support, but technical know-how. What are some of the innovations out there that are happening around water where you can reach millions of people? Um, and where, how can we share some of these knowledge with, um, with some of our other partners in developing countries that have overcome this challenge and can now share some of those lessons and innovations and techno technology. So I think it's, it's, it's just about resources from every level. And how can, I'm sitting at home, I'm just a quote unquote regular person, mm -hmm. how can I support you and the work that you're doing? Or how can I support water, the water to, to, you know, to help resolve water challenges mm -hmm. around the world? I think we can all play a role in our own small way by supporting organizations that are doing this work, investing in them, and, and every little bit helps. Um, you know, there are numbers floating around, but Sometimes with even $10, as little as $10 can help provide clean water to an individual. Um, you know, if, if you give $10 a month, you can literally provide clean water to that person for a lifetime, right? So sometimes it's as small as just making a small donation and supporting organizations that are doing the work, or again, using your voice, um, you know, to, to highlight the issue, to raise awareness, to champion um, the cause and, and, and hopefully that will, that, will, um, that will kind of contribute to all of the efforts that's happening around um, achieving the Sustainable Development Goal 6. So I know you've got a, you look stunning. Thank you. Absolutely stunning. I know you've got to go. Yes. I'd like for you to just finish this sentence yes. for me. I am. Powerful. <laughs> I am, yeah, I am powerful, you know, to be able to get all these people in one room, I think it takes a certain level of, of power to make that happen. We have a big goal for yes. tonight. Yes. A half a million dollars is yes. what we're looking to raise. Yes. I know we can do it. So I'm going to let you go do that. Thank and you. I just want to say, Saran, you truly, thank you. Thank because you Because the so work much. that you're doing literally changes lives. You know, you. I think sometimes we throw that around that, oh, changing lives, life changing. This literally is, like you said, this is the difference for a young girl yeah. not having to walk miles to get water, which means she may not go to school. So I want to say thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for Sandra. the courage. <laughs> thank you for your conviction. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm, thank, thank you. you. <laughs>